Well, hi, once again, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the International Nine Ball Open. Thank you, thank you. This event is produced by Pat Fleming, and we're coming to you from the Simonis Aramith Arena here at the Sheraton Norfolk Waterside Hotel, our most gracious and wonderful hosts. 112 players representing 27 countries have assembled here to vie for this most prestigious title and making this truly an international event. Before I introduce our two competitors for the 12:30 round, I'd like to take an opportunity to recognize once again and thank our three major sponsors, Aramith, Simonis, and Diamond, for their loyalty and support, not only of this event, but for professional pool worldwide. And lastly, on behalf of Pat, all of our crew, and all of our great champions that have assembled here, we'd like to thank each and every one of you for giving so much back to the game that we all love. Thank you so much. Uh, just a brief uh, note here before we introduce the players. These two gentlemen have a couple of uh, things in common that we need to recognize. Each one of them holds the record for Moscone Cup appearances for their respective uh, teams. Both players, 17-time members of their Moscone Cups, and both players are in the BCA Hall of Fame. They went in within two years of each other, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. All right, it's now my pleasure to introduce them, starting out with our first competitor. He's from Manching, Germany. He holds world championships in eight ball, nine ball, and 14-1 among his long list of accomplishments. Sponsored by Universal Cues, one of the game's great gentlemen. Please welcome the Kaiser, Ralph Souquet. His opponents from Ackworth, Georgia. He's a four-time world nine ball champion. There aren't many people that can say that. He's sponsored by Scorpion Cues, and we love him. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the Scorpion, Johnny Archer. Okay, guys, go ahead and lag for the break, if you would. At this time, it's my pleasure to send it upstairs to the commentary team, Mark Wilson, and our very own Hall of Famer, Danny DiLiberto, and all the gentlemen on the outer tables should be lagging for the break at this time if they haven't done so already. Thank you very much. This is the International Nine Ball Open coming to you from Norfolk. My name is Mark Wilson, and alongside me on the color is my partner and longtime friend, Danny DiLiberto. Danny, it's Archer Souquet. Any pre-match comments? This could have very well been a final match, like you said earlier, right? Two great players draw each other in the first round. That doesn't have to happen. <laughs> well, there's so many good players here. Um, most every match could be a final match had it drawn differently. Yeah. We're blessed and fortunate to be high above the AccuStats Arena here where we have the perfect view. It's a beautiful day for pool. And every year it seems like it was yesterday we were doing this. Doesn't seem like a year went by, does it? Not at all. No, time flies by. We were just discussing, I remember Johnny Archie when he was 18 years old. Today, he's got to be very near 50 years old, 50 or 51 now. The Kaisers won the break, won the lag. It's a winter break format. This will be our race to 11 games. Kind of an interesting break rule this year. The nine balls racked on the spot. There is a break box that's nine inches either side of center of the table. Well, if you people are wondering why do we rack the nine on the spot, it's less chance to go in a pocket. We don't want a game to go over with one swing because that's not really pool. Now it does count. The one ball found the side pocket. Okay, he's going to pick up a shot. Not an easy shot into the side pocket, but a very makeable shot. And position goes with it if he could make it. This will be the toughest thing he'll have to do this rack. Make the two, and you can't shoot it real hard. Ralph is very, very consistent performer. 
and the most traveled pool player, I would say. He's at every tournament all over the world. Beautiful rolling ball hit. Beautiful. Hit the heart of the pocket. Preserve the nice angle to transfer to the four ball. He's looking to see if he can fall pretty straight on the four and then play the five down in the far corner pocket. Well, he's got the right angle to do it. Don't overdo it or you might go behind the five. How's his like speed? This. It's not good. It's going behind the five. Now he's going to have to chip the four ball one cushion down onto the end oh. rail, I believe, unless he wants to try to jump. Yeah, you could jump or curve it, but position doesn't come with the curve. And the jump also leads the cue ball away from the five, which means you're taking on a difficult shot to get to maybe nothing. That's not advised. I think he, if he can hit the four, which he could, I think you play safe here because you're not going to get rewarded making it. Cut it thin and go maybe behind the seven. No, he didn't shoot hard enough for that, but he got him. Good shot. Got the blocker ball involved. All right. Archer's going to play a one or two rail kick here. He'd like to get some separation and distance. Looks like he's got to dig down to get a little draw to bend the cue ball back up because he's got to get past that eight ball. He he's hit it. Accomplished that task. Well, he sold out, but it's not an easy shot especially for position. And like Archer, he hasn't played real well in the last few years, but like I said earlier, he ran second at Turning Stone in Verona, New York. And he lost to uh, Shane Van Boning like a lot of other people do. <laughs> Well, we, yeah, we know he's capable and dangerous. That's one thing that's for certain. Look at this. Can he hit the point? Oh. Hey, Ralph holds his hand up as if to indicate he's very apologetic and sorry. Actually turned out quite well. Now, if he just doesn't, if he just doesn't go behind the seven ball here. Well, that'll be tough to do. He might hit the seven, but... He didn't go behind it. Well, he played it with a pace to take the seven out of play. If he had, he just rolled it only. Then there was, shot. he was at risk. Now we're going to see a draw shot, a stroke on the six. Very smooth. You can see the cue ball just lights up with spin. That's the brand new, the effect of the brand new cloth and the brand new balls. You want to play high performance pool, you need great equipment. Diamond pool tables provides that. Ralph's cruising, got the eight ball over the corner pocket where the nine ball will go next. Just on the wall. Go ahead, Danny. Go ahead. I was going to say a little left in English like that. Nice opening rack here. Ralph won the lag, broke, made a ball, made a nice shot, made a position there midway through, but salvaged that with a good safety. Converted the defensive exchange into game number one. On our drive out here, we stopped by the Diamond Q factory for the first time I've ever been in the table manufacturing factory. Most impressive. We learned quite a bit about these tables that we've played on for many years. Well, that's in Indiana, right? Yep. Which way did you come? I thought you were living in St. Louis. Uh, St. Louis goes right through Indiana, and uh, this is just, uh, you might, uh, well, Louisville is right next to it. So we're just on the Louisville side of uh, Indiana. Jeffersonville. An enormous factory. They have all kinds of tables under construction there. We've got the 
see the inner workings of it, and I'm here to tell you it is the finest table available in America today. He worked hard at it to get it to that. We're using the Eltsville racking template here. The player is uh, able to go and check the rack. He's not able to uh, request a different rack, nor is he able to touch the balls. Otherwise, that results in a one-game penalty. Suke breaking from the extreme left side of the table. The break box as he faces it. Dry he break. Yeah, you know, he made noise, that's all. Archer could pocket the one ball, but he'd have to draw the cue ball off the three and depend upon what part of the pocket it goes in. He could draw it straight back or it could run into the clutter. Well, I think if he put center left, he'll go one rail towards the eight. I don't know about drawing it. I think he'll glance the three. Well, I think it's a pretty oh, heavy it's collision. it's pretty heavy. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty heavy. For that reason, he is uh, queuing up a draw. This will be a pretty shot. One rail, got off the back of the object ball. Oh, pretty good. World class, <laughs> and better than pretty good. That's world class from that position. Not only the pocket to one, but also the maneuver of the cue ball off the secondary ball. Well done, Johnny Archer. Now you have a clue as to how he acquired four world championships. Very routine layout now. We are playing all ball fouls. Got a good angle for the angle. Gonna have to draw the ball a little bit. There's probably at least uh, 80 solid years of playing experience here being displayed in just this one singular match. Just like Danny said, he has a nice angle. He drew back just a little bit. Now he has a two cushion approach to the six. Well, he got kind of on the 50 yard line, but he's Got a pretty good shot on the six. I think he can kill the cue ball. Which he did. Maintains his angle. Just a little one rail traverse towards the nine. We'll be all tied up here on the completion of this stroke. Great opening shot by Johnny Archer for position. He turns that into a game. Our score is tied at one game apiece. And people, if you know Archer, he doesn't play fast ordinarily, but he played fast that game. In fact, one time I said, Johnny, you play better when you play fast. And he played fast and lost two in a row. <laughs> <laughs> so well, I never happen. told him that again. Oh, yeah, with this field, holy God. Yeah, just looking in the outer tables, I, I see Alex Pagulines playing. I saw Feeder Gorst. Uh, there, well, every table. There's be much easier to list the guys that possibly couldn't win it because there'd only be two or three guys in the entire 113 player field here. Possibly couldn't win it. I noticed Carl said Pagulines from Canada. He's half of the time in Canada, half of the time in the Philippines. The reason for Canada, Toronto, his mother lives there. Little cursory rack inspection. Sometimes they can determine that if the balls aren't perfectly frozen, there's an advantage to break from one side of the box or the other. Note the care of the eyes here as he sets up. Aiming is a critical component of the breaking. These guys use a cut break. Try to bring the cue ball over by the first di or second diamond. Nine ball got loose, almost went in the side pocket. That would have been a win. 
Archer's looking to see if the two clears the seven. Yeah, I would say it does. But you got to pull on it without hitting balls in the way. And you got to land on it pretty well. You want to be close if you only have yeah. a partial pocket. Look at this. He's shooting left-handed. Rare. I never seen him do that. Well, he's got a little trick here. He would have liked to have been a little fuller, but he didn't want to gamble on snookering himself. He can go one rail to the three in the side. Beautiful shot. Yeah, he shot that very confidently, so he had a little more room than we could see. Yeah, that was a good shot because he put a little bit of left-hand English so the ball didn't get lost. And he got pretty good on the three. But he's still going to have to hit rails, at least one of them. I like going two rails towards the seven. Trying to go one rail. Did he hit it too hard? Looks like he moved. A little bit, but he's okay. And he got clear of the seven, so he's fine. He can get down to the bottom of the cue ball. He can manipulate the cue ball a little bit here. You know how you talk about Johnny playing opposite-handed? Do you know that John Mora has switched hands now 100% of the time? Really? Yeah, John Mora, oh, the yeah. great player. He's a funny guy. He quit the game a few years ago to become a, a, a DJ. an announcer. Yeah. Yeah. Now he went that way. He's been making a pretty good accounting. He always did He's play. He's a good player. He always did switch hands in the middle of matches when we'd see him play, and he, he was very nimble with it. And for, for some reason, I don't know if it's a physical impediment or what, but he switched hands full time. I saw him here practicing and at the pool room last night practicing. Perfect. Yeah, Johnny looks like he's ready to play. Very slick cloth. Johnny glides it into the heart of the pocket. First break and run out of the match. Archer now leads two games to one, and he will maintain his break. Well, Johnny is from Atlanta, which is not far from here, especially if you're in a car. <laughs> Pretty good opening afternoon audience here. Especially on a football Sunday. Ken Schumann, our referee, is racking. Hard worker. Night, yep. Oh, he's struck by Ralph Suquet's countenance at the table. When you see him sitting in the chair, he's very erect. His body language suggests that he's here for business. He really doesn't mind what his opponent is doing because he's focused on his next opportunity at the table. It makes him very, very consistent, tough to beat. He went for a span of time where there was 104 pro tournaments. He finished in the top four 92 times. I've never heard of another pro player with that type of a record. Archer breaking, cut break. Cue ball drifts, got a little bit high, got kissed back into and the corner. Scratched. Suke comes to the table with an optimum start. The result of this kiss into the corner pocket scratch for Archer will be about a 90% kill ratio. Ball in hand, open layout like this. Top players. Right now, Johnny can feel a little bit uh, 
abused with fortune. Well, he's got to avoid the side pocket because he's going that direction. Maybe he's going to go forward. That might be the best way. No, he made sure he didn't go near the side pocket. Great control, great thinking. Very cerebral game, pool. You know, everybody starts off make, being a shot maker, right? Right. Then you got to get the knowledge and the speeds and the patterns. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Yeah, it was clumsy there. He was trying to kill it to hold it for the three. I truly think. And he killed his wallet. I truly think the use of the extension and the way it distorts your timing and then a thin cut and he's trying to manipulate the cue ball there conspired against him and he hit the ball heavy. And this is where I really think a player should learn to use the bridge effectively and confidently. Especially the ones who are four foot tall. Well, Johnny Arch will make him pay for that. And that is an unforced error, and that's what dictates the outcome of these matches. And that will certainly embolden Johnny to feel more confident about the outcome of this match. Johnny figured to lose that, man, or that rack quite a bit of the time, and he didn't have to pay the ultimate price for the kiss into the corner pocket on the scratch. Well, he can hit the four. You go on the outside of the eight, I believe. Yeah, he he got a little thin. He wanted to be able to hit a little thicker. He may have to just come one rail across. He got that Good thin. shot. He was hoping to come around three rails, but he just did not get close enough to hit the four ball full enough. No problem here with position. Six and seven lead to each other. Yeah, he didn't do a great job there. No, <laughs> no he would have liked to got a little fuller. And it's, it's not that he can't make the shots. It's the fact that he knows he's a little out of line. The cue ball's uh, going away from this. Not far, though. No. Now the little funny angle here. Well, he's got the angle. I don't know if he could kill it and play the eight in the right-hand corner to him. But I think he could kill Nice shot. He had a good angle for this. Top spin with speed control, two cushions. Better shot. Cue ball travels directly towards his target line. Right at the nine. Two one, Archer. Well, so far, Archer's been mistake-free, except for the scratch on the break, which the cue ball got hit by a few balls to do that. And, did I say 2-1? 3-1. Anyway, the point is that... Uh, Johnny did not hit his break anywhere near the way he hoped to last rack. So he go to school on that. Try to hit him just a little bit thinner. Outer table action, Peggy Lyon versus Tyler Steyer. Tyler trying to have a good tournament here. Make the U.S. Moscone Cup team this year. Like Don't Tyler. touch the rack, John. You touch the rack, you lose a game. Well, I got a question. If you touch the rack and lose a game, who breaks? Uh, the opponent. Yeah, the offender loses his break as well. Archer tried to hit a little bit thinner. 
did a little better job with it that time. He made the four ball. And the cue ball landed in the rack area. Oh, Ken Schumann's. That was, was that the four or the five? It doesn't matter because it's not going to change the rotation of the balls. Look at the two and the nine. That's a problem over there and a, right. a, a big problem. Well, if you can get pull on the two, I think you can hit the rail, shoot the nine free, and snooker them. Make it a free shot. Let's see what he wants to do. I don't think you want to hit him. I think he's going after the 2-9 combination, even though it's not ideal. Uh-oh. Well, there's no safe now. If the three wasn't there, I think Johnny would go high ball here and try to double the cushion with the cue ball and attack the nine and then bill or bank the four ball or two ball four cushions. Yeah, that's but, probably the best shot. Well, the, with the three there, that's problematic. You could luck the two ball into the corner pocket off the back of the three, but you could also sell out because the nine ball is pretty far away from the cushion, so it's not easy for the cue ball to hug the rail and billiard the nine in. I wouldn't even play the nine. I shoot the two straight on, try to four rail it behind maybe the six and eight. The three isn't in the way of that path. Johnny went to his extension. He did what I said, and he did it pretty nicely, I would say. He almost made it. Good thinking. Now, Ralph's going to kick. And because of the two balls' proximity to the corner pocket, Ralph's probably about 50-50 to make this shot. And position is automatic if he does. Interesting. He's going with a little softer speed than I thought. Made it. This is what I was talking about. Position is automatic. Although he's losing the cue ball, it's a little thinner than you'd like. It's borderline whether I would award uh, Johnny with an unforced error on that safety play, but I think he could have uh, handled the two ball just a little better and not left it. Well, the two hit the, the seven. That's why it went near the pocket, or he wouldn't have had a kick like that. But that's over. He's going to spin this in. Might be able to go around the back side of the four. He's going into the four. He's no trying good. to get around it, but he did well, go into it. Well, it goes in the side off the six. I think he can play it in the side. Yeah. Now it's a matter of he's going to use right-hand English on the cue ball to bring it down table as the six ball will go down by the corner pocket. Well, he was looking at the one rail bank, but I think this goes in the side. Well, he's not banking. No, he's playing He's playing the shot well, you originally look, called. Yeah, but look the way he's lining up. He's trying to determine where the six is going so he can get the cue ball down there. So a lot's going on here because you don't have to load it up with right English, which now makes accuracy to the six a little bit of an issue. Oh, yeah. you hit a two pull. And that's the problem with that shot. Oh, if it wasn't it was, a gimme, but he had the shot. If he didn't have to use side spin English, it was, you know, much more of a certainty, but he was trying to get position on the six, play the speed right. So a lot was going on there. Meanwhile, Archer comes to the table, nice open layout. Johnny being mindful of his shirt. We're playing all ball fouls. That means if his sleeve touched that eight, it would have been a foul. For years, these events were cue ball fouls only. It's a little bit backward. However, in an unrefereed match, it's much harder to determine if someone is lightly object ball fouled. But this is the way the game in sports should be played. Archer now expands his lead, four games to one.
It's a great start here for Johnny Archer. If he was going to make a deep run in this event, and you have to start off naturally with a tough opponent. It's nice to get off the mark well, get your confidence rowing, get a little feel for the table. Johnny Archer resides near Atlanta. We say Atlanta. Originally he's from Marietta, Georgia. No, Metter. Metter, Georgia. Little bitty it's town. It's not far from Atlanta anyway. Right. Three balls on the wing. break. Three ball went high, one ball did not find the pocket. Dry break, Piers. And Ralph Suke comes to the table with a medium difficulty shot, facing a four to one deficit. Yeah, there's nothing uh, obvious here. I mean, you try to cut the one in, you're going to have trouble falling on the two because of the eight and the uh, four ball. Yeah, that six ball is quite large if you cut it in there without any side spin, but then when you introduce side spin, the accuracy is difficult and you can further not get position. He did go with side spin. Watch out. Yeah. And that was the problem. The two well, pushing her out. He's not snookered. He doesn't have a shot. You got to play safe. I would. Well, he's going to the extension that failed him moments ago. He's going to try to drag the cue ball over underneath the four and the eight and the seven clutter and try to bank the two ball down table. The extension failed him? You mean it was the extension's fault? Oh, he's thin. <laughs> yeah, that's what I meant. He didn't <laughs> yeah, do well I'm with it. He's thinning the two over by the four and eight. Oh, That's a and good a option as well. Good speed. Great shot. Made the most of that. Well, you got a one rail kick, but you're going to have to put a lot of left hand English to get it to go over that way. Man, he's blocked. He's going to have to go two cushions here, I believe. He could go one. I think he could, but that that would be the safest way, I think. I don't know, because you go in there with pace. Well, you got to hit this no matter what. Don't give Ralph ball in hand. And he did hit it, and look where he put it. Boy, good Ralph call. Ralph is not going to like this. <laughs> no, good call, and it's really tough to play safe from this distance and the, the awkwardness of the lay of the balls here because the cue ball likely could clatter into the five or the two ball could hit the five, and then exact accuracy makes it tough. Ralph took a little glance at the two and three combination. Right. That that looks possible. Better than uh selling out without shooting at the at the shot to to win. You know. Good point. Yep. He'd rather go down shooting here. Go down yeah. shooting. It's a the, low percentage. The three play. is sitting good. It's not so low percentage, you gotta make a good shot. He hit the ball. He <laughs> he got just did he play this? <laughs> Well, he didn't raise his hand as if to apologize, so he's going to at least pretend that he played it that way. When you play a Japanese player and you get lucky, they turn to you and they bow. And that's apologizing. Archer now with a one rail kick, and you notice how much care he puts into it. They try to extract every bit of value from all these shots. 
solid impact. Well, he's not going to save them. No. He's going to have the three combination again. I think it's very shootable. I'm thinking he'd like to look to see if he couldn't tuck the cue ball behind the seven, but it might not be laying right for that. Just play no, safe. No, he can't hit the cue ball low enough. Right. So I think you got to play the three. You're going to brush the no. uh, seven. And he's going to try to get behind it. Well, look at the five and nine, too. You, you still don't have a certainty. You're right. You called a good shot there. We didn't think he could dig down on the cue ball that much, but he was able to, and his angle and judgment was I'll tell you, perfect. that was a great call. I didn't think he could do that. And the players are lucky you're not in the tournament. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to laugh. Yes, they're very lucky. <laughs> All right, well, this is not an easy ball to kick and hit. No, he oh, did. he hit it. He almost made it. Look at this save. Wow, he's got him snookered. Well, they're looking. He's almost... I don't think he can make the two for sure. I think, no, I think he can. It's it's a borderline call. This really? Would be, if, if he can, the question is, do you use a little bit of right-hand English and try to dislodge the five here? Well, it's going that way if you happen to make this two. He's going to spin it. Like you said, this could turn out real well. You can go after the five with the three. So, oh, he's got to jump. Okay. No, then this, this is just go all out to make the ball and not worry about the cue ball. Oh, what a clean hit. And he made the um, good shot. Yeah. But he's still got the five to contend with. Yeah, once he's pocketed that ball, now he's got a little bit of momentum back his way, and he can defend himself from here on in. It's when the cue ball goes airborne, it's very difficult to protect yourself. That was yourself. a great shot. The three ball's up from the corner pocket, about four inches, so you cannot be cute and try to do something power up and try to stun it into the five ball. Or if you do, you assume significantly more risk. And just as I called that, looks like now he is going to go after the five here. Nope. Oh, boy. He worked the cue ball much closer to the four. Now he has a possibility. Gonna check it out. Maybe a little flat. I think if he cuts it a hair, he's going at the nine. Does he have an angle to do that? He's looking at how he wants to fall on the five to possibly cross corner bank it. Yeah, I like the bank here. But you really need to have a pretty good angle, and you'd like to certainly be close if you're going to risk a bank. Well, you get the thin black bank, and you go two rails to the six. I'm making it sound easy, but it's not. Keep all lit up nicely. Oh, this is that awkward angle. Not only awkward, he might have the kiss. Yeah, you can see he kind of cocked his head as if to indicate just what Danny said, that this is this is a dicey situation, and it's not easy to play safe from here either. Not Unless, at all. I don't know if you could overcut it and protect yourself and get separation, just, you know. Well, how full can he hit it? If he can hit it full, he could, he could snooker him, but I think you better shoot this. But I think if he tries to play position one rail, he's going to get a kiss. Yeah, he purposely overcut it. He kissed it. He did. Kicked the six ball up by the side. The yeah. five ball lays open. Oh, boy. Johnny Archer is liking the way this match is working out so far. You know, it's a good match to get by. You know, Ralph's okay. I'd say... Good speed. You see where the eight ball's at? Sometimes players would really enjoy the opportunity to billiard that eight ball and, and remove it from there, given where the seven's at, because the seven makes it kind of a treacherous yeah, thing to play. Yeah, but where the nine is, Mark, you could play the eight in the far corner, and you'll have position. True that. That's, that's the proper way, I believe, here. 
get to the eight in the far corner, and you, where the nine is, you're you're gonna benefit. Yeah, he definitely doesn't have the angle to get after the eight here anyway. So three rails around, work the cue ball closer, pick up an angle to transfer across the table. Yeah, I, I like playing the eight in the far corner because that takes the side pocket out of the way if you go one rail the other way. I think you just cut this in and get to the eight in the far corner. Some guys go inside spin to have two cushion approach towards the eight. Johnny goes He's one doing rail. what I said. So he, he got pretty good. Nice He's beat. gonna be off the cushion. Good thinking, John. If the point doesn't get in the way, <laughs> that point doesn't look like it's in the way, but it gets there. Gotta get it past the side. Mm. Good shot. You glided it home. Glad to be past that shot. Routine nine balls, all that stands between Archer and a five to one lead. And Johnny Archer, it's been all Archer so far. Ralph Souquet with a couple unforced errors. This is an international nine ball because we got 27 countries represented. I like that. 10 players here from uh, Taipei, Republic of China, Taipei. And you know every one of those guys is an elite killer. Oh, they're great players. <laughs> great players. They must put in a lot of time playing. I asked you once before, you have been to Taipei? Certainly have, a couple times. It's an experience being there because it's crowded and there's like three, four people riding on mopeds. <laughs> right. I mean, at once. <laughs> yes, in traffic, whizzing Whole by. Whole families on a moped. <laughs> in heavy traffic. Copen Chung performing now. He's part of that contingent. Yeah, and a contender here. Right, or anywhere. His brother will be here in the AccuStats Arena later, playing Billy Thorpe. Archer set the break now, staying on the left side of the break box. Eight ball on the wing. The wing ball not finding the mark very regularly, nor is the one. Look at this. Okay, I'm not pulling for anybody, but Suke, you got to get out in this one to have a chance in this match. You can't let this one get away. You fall on the two, and everything else looks like it's in the hole. Ralph skewing up a little left-hand side spin. Very good shot, but it's a little thinner than he'd like to be. Looks like he can play it off the five if he doesn't like it, and it might afford a little better cue ball control. And it'll put the five in a pretty good place. Yeah, he did play one of these shots earlier and did not hit it well. I like that call, but it's a very thin hit off the five. You hit it too full, you're not going to make it. Well, the problem with cutting the two in is that you're going to clatter the five, the seven, and, and you can easily lose control of the cue ball you doing will. it. So if, if you can, cut it in, you're going to lose control. If you can play it off the five here, that really uh, affords you a lot more control with the cue ball. No, he did not want to fool with that. <laughs> Tremendous ball speed there. It just <laughs> it barely fell made off. it, but it did. And he has a shot on the three. He's got to hit rails with the cue ball, but I think there's no problem for a man like Suke. Yeah, there's a lot of veteran experience here. Ralph made his best decision, then supported with great execution. I like that hit. If it doesn't go behind the nine, no, he's fine. He's got the four okay, ball here. Okay, he's got it. He's fine. It's 
Yeah, when you watch Ralph sit in the chair, he's constantly psyching himself up for his next opportunity at the table. Well, over the years, I called it a few times, it looked like he was meditating. Right. You never see him hurried, and you always see his very, very fluid backswing and transition to the forswing, and that greatly aids consistency, plus his intense focus that he brings to the match. And despite being behind five to one, he's nowhere near out of this match. He doesn't show emotion either. He's what we call a cool cat for sure. Yeah, consummate professional. Nobody ever looks at the chart and says, oh, goody, I got Ralph Suquet. Oh, <laughs> I doubt <laughs> ever. it. See, the good thing about this is you got to play the good players to win the tournament, but you'd still rather have some soft matches, if there is such a thing, to get some kind of prize money cinched. I know you agree with that. You well. get a couple <laughs> matches and you got money coming, I think your risk gets a little looser. Well, that part of it's true. I don't agree with it that money should be your motivator, though. I, I, I think <laughs> you should be here to win the title and come here to play the very best player that you can find and not worry about it. And if you get something less, then you're never disappointed. If you get the top dog, Good enough. That's what we came here to play. Uh-oh. Yeah, bad shot. Okay. Open miss on the eight ball. The third unforced error. Johnny cannot believe his good fortune. He's not used to Ralph providing these type opportunities. Well, you know, he's, Ralph's been playing in all the tournaments all around the world. It's possible he's getting a little burnt out. And it's also possible to just miss balls. I mean, it's yeah, not an easy he, game. We're just so familiar and used to Ralph. him. He killed the ball nicely. But this is missable. Johnny takes an extra moment there. We are playing with a 40-second shot clock as it winds down to 20. Good Johnny shot. Johnny Archer. Good shot. Yeah. That was one of those mid-range shots, and even though you don't have anything to do with the cue ball, it is missable. Ralph is now requesting a timeout. I don't think he can take it until it's this inning. That's what he was informed. Even if you say so. 6-1 is our score. Archer in front of Suke. Shane Van Boning's entered the arena to observe the proceedings. Chris Melling sitting in the audience. Peggy Lyon has returned from a 3-1 deficit on the outer table to lead 5-1 or 5-3 and and then control the open layout of balls here. What else is going on? Like Copen Chung is leading five to one. Appears that John Schmidt is trailing five three. Outer table action. Justin Bergman played here on the TV table. And his played first very match. Well. I think he won 11 to 3. Archer switching sides for the break now for the first time in the match. Four ball, the wing ball. Four ball fell well high. One ball missed the side pocket. It's going to be a dry break. Ralph gets to come back to the table. With no further penalty. Declares his timeout. So if you guys will hang on, we'll be right back in just a few moments. 
Okay, everybody, we're back from the player timeout. Well, I'll tell you, losing six to one, I think you got to shoot here. Yeah, and I don't think the score dictates this shot. I don't think that because he's not going to force something that's not there, but it's just the right shot. And that's glides what it I in. thought. He got good on the two also. But they're not sitting that that good. He's got a lot of work to do here. Pretty good hit. Last rack. Ralph missed a very makeable eight ball. Earlier in the match, he missed a ball down the rail with this extension that he figured to make. And that's all it really takes to get behind six to one. Just a great talent like Johnny Archer. Boy, you, this is a tricky rack. Mm-hmm. You know, just don't snooker yourself on the pie ball. Got the funny angle here now. I don't know if he can draw with the right hand English to the end rail, side rail, and then back to the middle of the table. Or if he can just go one rail to the middle of the table. Only one rail. And it's, you know, you're close to the middle of the table. Good call. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little off. But he got the shot, and position is not tough. You got to go forward, though. I don't think you draw the ball. I think you go forward. Looks like he's lining up to go two cushions. He needs to avoid the six. Oh, yeah. He did so. I, I thought he'd go forward, but he couldn't have got any better than this. Spin down, one cushion. It's tough to get bad position on the eight here. Mm -hmm. No matter where you get. Yeah, you prefer to not be straight in so you don't have to drag the cue ball back and lay against the side cushion, but even that's not the worst scenario in the world. But No, he's going to be all right. Oh. He got straight in, sort of. No, he's but good. But enough to get off the rail. That's all he needs. And he, he worked the cue ball back so smoothly. He got perfect. Yeah, he got... what you're saying. He got close and off the rail. Now a little bit of draw. Perfect. Yeah, he can get his full bridge hand down on the table now. This will be Suke's second win. Suke two, Johnny Archer six. In an interesting fashion, too, when, when amateurs are playing and it's 6-2, to two, that's an enormous lead. With great players, it's not that much. No, it isn't. You're right. Just an inning or two, possibly, is all the separation. I saw Shaw come back from, like, 10-3 to three and win the match. Hmm. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing him this year. He puts on another electric performance like he did in, in the recent past. Just absolutely incredible. And of over all the years that we've been at these tournaments, Shaw's performance was perhaps the most electrifying in terms of the consistency and the uh, high-powered shots that he produced. Right. He's very exciting. Just a fearless shot maker that possesses power, too. Okay, 2-6. Suke breaking. Goes to the left side of the box as he faces the table. The eight ball will be your wing ball. 
Neither player has converted the wing ball at all during this match. Have not had a lot of success finding the side pocket with the one either. One he made did. the one in the side, and he's got position oh for boy. the two. That's nice. Yeah, he needs a couple racks like this. Yeah. You cannot go back and forth and gunfight because this is going to be 50 50. You got to collect a couple games from the break here if you want to distinguish yourself with top talent. Well, he's got a chance here to get one of them, but you got to have the right angle on the three to get to the four, which means a little tougher shot. for the long corner pocket. This way the cue ball could kind of naturally <laughs> pro proceed towards the four, but he might have gotten just a little bit straight. I can see the way he's looking at this. He, he's going to have to pound this hard to get any angle to get to the four. He'll hit it hard. Oh, boy, what a nice shot. It was. He didn't hit it that hard, but he had enough angle to get good on the four to get good on the five. Now, I kind of feel like he did hit that pretty hard, but he was so smooth it didn't seem like he hit it that hard because, like you said, he was really flat on that ball, and he only moved the cue ball out of diamond's width from the rail. Well, now he wants to get straight in on the five to get to the six. Two-cushion approach. Oh, I don't think so. This is yeah. not good. He didn't get good. Well, you made a great call. Now Ralph has to make a great shot. Mm. I, can he miss the nine and get where he's aiming right now? Looks like he can. He could, and that'll give him the angle to get to the seven also. But part one is this, you know. Make the ball. <laughs> yeah, this is a little tougher when you're losing five to one or two. Top spin straight across. Just go past the center line of the table. He, well, he didn't hit it real good, but his position ended up getting there. He got good. He caught it just a little full. Oh, he's got the angle of go to seven. He's got a pretty good angle now to get to the eight. See what Archer is shooting? 976. Yeah. yeah. That's um, impossible to beat. That's a torrid pace for sure. I think you got to go a little forward and shoot the nine in the corner. He doesn't have any angle, I don't believe. Hmm. Well, they got weird. He got and tricky. The, I like the way Ralph puts his chin right on the shot line and he wants the nine ball to follow. Queuing up a little bit below center. Fluid transition. Scores a nine. Nice break and run out for Ralph Suquet, the much needed juncture of the match. He trails three games to six.
I'd like to say hello to the guys at Classic Q in Buffalo, Mike Durney and the Testa Uda gang. <laughs> mm. Is that hard head? Where'd you tell hard me? Hard head, you're yeah. right. Yeah. Italian Testa Uda. Good break there by Ralph. Where are you two? Oh, completely That's covered. That's where it is. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Uh-oh. Yeah, this is really tricky to negotiate. Well, he's obviously going to push. But like we said, and I, I said Bergman used this very well in his early match. Mm -hmm. Whenever you push, tie up a ball first. That gives you a guarantee you'll, you'll get back to the table. Right. Wouldn't you push that six right up on top of the five here when right. you push? Right, that's yeah. it. Very lightly. The two does not go in the pocket. They'll be able to hit it, but so what? Yeah, you'll be vulnerable. For, well, he's not doing that. Is he pushing the nine? Oh, no, what's he doing? He's not going aggressive. He's just going to push. I thought he could have been more productive no, with I that did, shot. Yeah. I thought he could have did a little bit more. And we know he knows better. Well, now Johnny can rub the two. It might go off the five, but bring the cue ball back down table, far end, and try to drop the two ball under the end rail on the opposite end of the table. Yeah, I think Ralph made a bad shot. Now I'm sure he did. And he figures to get the worst of that exchange. Despite the fact that he can hit it, he still has a defensive play here. Didn't turn out as unfavorably as it looked like it might at first. This is a, a predicament, but the great players here extract themselves from these very circumstances. Inside spin. Yeah, Ralph. Great shot. Consummate professional, not forcing anything. Great shot. Certainly was. Johnny gets down on one knee. See if he can see the edge of this. I think he can hit the, the two. I think he, and if he can, he can go behind the four. Well, he didn't get him. He's got the two in the corner. No, no, he can't pocket the two. You don't think so? I think the three's impeding him. I think he maybe hit the edge of it. Oh, he can't hit it full enough. Now Ralph's going to try to decide if he cut the two by the nine and control the cue ball, which looks super difficult and perhaps even unavailable. Well, if he could hit the nine with the two, that'll stop the two from getting action, and he can go behind the four, but I don't know if he can do all that. It's yeah. tough. He's in a bad spot. That's a lot of movement. And originally, I thought he could make this two. Well, he hit the nine, but that's <laughs> not helping. Well, if the two didn't recollide with the cue ball, it was going to scratch. So, Yeah, that's... I don't know. That was not... That was just that tricky of a position that he had to try to escape, but... Yeah, he couldn't do too much. It was doom. And he's looking to expand his lead and his TPA here. But he has work to do. You know, he's got to get perfect on the five to control it. Definitely you that. You know, he's going to play the combination course, five-eight. Well, he can get pretty close to the combination with this angle. And isn't that crucial? If you want to control the secondary object ball, getting the cue ball close really helps. And that's what he's measuring right now. He knows he can get the 5-8, but he doesn't want that cue ball to drift away from the 5. There's no sense playing a combination if you can't score and want to win with it. So he determined he wanted to be... No, oh, he got the wrong angle. Yeah, he wanted to be a little straighter. Yeah, he got the wrong angle. It's going to be tricky. 
now what Danny's saying is the cue ball's going to leave the area and move to his left. Johnny's trying to figure a way to hit the five ball just a little bit fuller. If he misses it, it'll be... Well, if he hits this soft, he'll have the five in the far corner. Oh, he was able to control that well. Yeah, good shot. But that was as a result of getting close to the combination, like you call. Yeah, you can do so much more when you're close. He can hit the six full enough to hold it for the seven, and then the rest is history. Position on the nine, he will go in front seven games to three. And his total performance average noses up 980 is all. Up to beat. <laughs> yeah, well. Boy, that's why he's winning seven to three. I've, I've never seen a player play a long match and lose with a 980. No, no I'm just saying. You it, might you, never see it. Right. Uh, the, the only way that could possibly happen, and we have seen some big total performance averages lose, but it's when it's one player dominates and the score will end up 11-2. to two, But it's because the other guy ran nine racks, and you, you're a couple times at the table. You did do well. But when you uh, both players get a number of innings, I've never seen a 980 lose. Peggy Lyons put on quite a flurry over there. He was trailing behind 3-1 and is now in front 9-3. <laughs> he won eight in a row? Yeah, but he's about to lose this one, and he did. 9-4. There's Albin Ocean entering the TV arena. Archer back to the left side of the box now. The three ball is the wing ball. One ball in the hand, of course. Two ball in the very back of the rack. Neither the one or the three found the mark. Hoping the one. Oh, he's got it. an angle to make it and get on the two. He can make this. Hmm. Well, that would be a big opportunity then that Ralph will need to convert because... Earlier in the match when there's a little bit of a deficit, not too bad, but the uh, pressure really mounts up as Archer starts to pile on a couple more games from here. Ralph certainly looks content with the shot, so. Oh, he's got it. Yep. It's position that's going to be tricky. You hit it too hard, you go behind the five, you hit it too easy, you don't get to the two. Oh, he decided to bank it. Well, he didn't decide that. Sleep in the street. That's no. all he had, I guess. Yeah, yeah. You know he would have played it straight in. He wouldn't have opted to pass the cue ball by it and cross-corner bank it. But. Archer's looking to see if the two goes up the far corner so he can control the cue ball better with no risk of snooking him. Right. Let's see what he does. Got to roll it in softly. I don't consider that an unforced error. I, he was forced to play a shot there, and he was trying to get the pace on the cue ball. Well, then that uh, took the... He couldn't hit the object ball thin enough to maintain the pace on the cue ball to get the two, so he tried to do a lot with that shot. Hung it up. Archer comes to the table. Nice open layout here. Four ball will be a little tricky, but the three's on that same end of the table. Good shot. I don't know. Is the 
point of the side in the way. <laughs> All right. And Johnny recognizes just what Danny's saying. He's got to work around the side pocket, and that is dictated by which part of the corner pocket the two ball enters. And the speed. If you shoot it harder, it'll glance more like that. Good shot, but now the cue ball is going to drift down below the three. So, oh, he's okay. Well, he's not okay for getting position on the four. He is okay to pocket the ball, but the decision is now, do you want to try to play safe on the four or do you want to play safe on the three? I don't believe that running out from here is an option that is justified by the percentages. Does he have obstructions if he tries to go three rails to the four in the side? I think that's what he's going to try. Oh, good call. I don't know that he's going to get where he wanted to be. But he's got a shot. I think he's not going to... I don't think he's going to force the issue here. I think it is going to be a safety. He might just drift the cue ball over behind the eight. He might try to put the... Well, I know he'd like to introduce the six and the eight I here. think he's got a shot to shoot it. But you were calling it right. Good call, Mark. Whew. This really puts the pressure on, too, because Ralph's got a tough ball to hit and a very open layout if he fails to connect on the four ball here. So he is jumping in over the six. It's pretty close range. Now it's a real awkward multi-rail kick. Very tough to hit here. Yeah. The other part of it, I, I kind of feel like Ralph has a good chance to... Well, no, he's not surely not bending it for one cushion kick. I think he goes side rail, end rail, around the seven, and back up into the four. Tough shot. Very tough shot. And the problem with that is the cue ball and the four ball will both be heading the same direction, so you're not likely to come out of that favorably. Yeah, he was looking to see if the eight was in the way of the kick. He's going at one rail. No, he isn't. What a hit. Watch out, cue ball. That's going in the hole, Mark. Made a great hit, but he didn't get rewarded. Yeah, uh, well, it was just the result of a great safety by Johnny Archer. Ralph did all he could do. He made a good hit on the ball. And you know the saying, no good shot goes unpunished. <laughs> Yeah, Johnny played a great shot, and Ralph did too, but Johnny came out on top. Yeah, he's got to shoot the five in the corner, and it's perfect for the six. Yeah, Johnny's weighing out. He just doesn't want the cue ball to bump the eighth at all after he hits the six. So he's No, he wants to get straight in without where he can go in and out without hitting it. Mm-hmm. Cue ball's close he enough. He got a funny angle. Well, I think he worked the pocket a little bit there. I, I think he's going to be okay. You go to the right or to the left? Whatever he chooses will be the right way. He's too experienced of a oh, player. Oh, he's perfect. Yeah. Couldn't have got better with his fingers. Yeah, Johnny's playing very solid. <laughs> I should say. After this rack is over, if he collects these three balls, he'd be down to like playing just at a 970 clip. Two rails to the nine, I believe. Played a nine in that left-hand corner to him. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, both Danny and Johnny Archer in stroke. <laughs> Opting for the exact route you described. 8-3 is our score now. Then all Johnny Archer. He's playing it out. What does that say up there? 9.66. Yeah, with 
this type of a deficit in the uh, distance of the match, now the pressure does mount up a bit on Ralph. Especially if you're sitting in the chair. Early on when you're 5-1 behind, not too bad because you know it's just one or two innings. But now as we near the end of the match, you're sort of forced. And then Ralph really hasn't been that fortunate, much like in that rack where he made a nice kick and hit that could have possibly turned out differently. He did end up scratching. steadfast and is uh, staying to the left side of the box. He has not been that productive from there, but you have to think that he feels like the other side's not going to be more productive and he's more comfortable on this side. Four ball on the wing. Just nothing is going in. Yeah, no shot. You know, you're losing eight to three. You'd rather not have to play a safe, but you've got no choice. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be suicidal to go aggressive here. You're off angle on both banks, cross corner, cross side. But I think it does go in the corner bank, but you, you can't gamble and shoot it, I don't think. No, it'd be so thin, and you could certainly lose the cue ball quite easily. Guess he's just going to try to chip it down on the end rail. Well, the best part is he's over the top with the cue ball. So, I mean, the best part for uh, Suke, if there is such a thing, this is going to be a tough situation. I don't know if we get the overhead here, but... I, th I really think it's not a bad option to kick two cushions, try to drive the one ball this way and let the cue ball come back down in and that fashion. How about hitting it full and two railing it to the end rail? I think that's a better choice. But you're elevated, so yeah, is it, it's you option. Yeah, but hit it full. You can yeah, hit if you it can, full. that's okay too. Yeah, I like that. Be a little better control. Although none of it is good. Easy, right. You either shot whatever you choose, and I certainly wouldn't fault anyone. Their shot he selections like are impeccable. He looks like he's going to try to cut it in. But how do you get rewarded there? No, I think, he's going, gonna, I think he's going with your shot, Danny. I think he's going to try to play safe. I think safe. he should. No, you're right. He's trying to cut it in. I was right the second time. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean... It, that was such an awkward shot. What and was he going to do with the two? He couldn't gain anything. But well, he no, could play he... safe, I guess. He was trying to play position to play safe because, uh, there, yeah, you're right. He was not going to run out in either case. There was nothing easy there. And he isn't left easy for Ralph either. I like to, when I'm in this position, I like to look and say, the guy has to beat me eight to two now to win this match. That gets your confidence up a little. He's shooting it for sure. Nice shot. Yeah, but look at this. How do you get to the three? He's got a shot on the two. So he just gets tough. He, he made a tough shot. Now he's got to even a tougher shot. And, and in either case, is it likely to lead to a victory? Well, he's winding up as if he thinks he can draw to the center of the table. Maybe one rail. A lot of clutter over there. He hit the pocket good. What a nice shot that was. And he's got a shot. What that a was nice great. shot. Yeah. 
Super. That was the best shot of the match. He's a cool customer for sure. He had to hang in there, take a very distasteful position to make the most of it. That bleeds off so much focus, and now you got to regain yourself because you do have a way to win now after those first two great shots. He Watch overcut out. it, he overcut it, but he's he okay. He's isn't he? No, straight in. Oh, he's straight on in. On the okay. four ball, yeah, he's real close. He's only yeah, a he's got it. diamond apart. I thought it brushed the six and went behind it. But as I see this screen, it's perfect. Not quite. <laughs> you still got a lot of work to do here. Mm-hmm. Can he get to the side on the five? Uh-oh. Oh, that's not going to be good. He's Big snookered. Well. That's quite snookered, and he knows it, and he's mad. Now he's got to get the jump cue out. Yeah, I don't think that's going to save him. No. Speaking of the jump. The the two people I saw jump in my career that were great is Pat Fleming and Earl Strickland. And, you know, Pat played in the uh, tournament, you know, Turning Stone, and he won his first four matches. Did you know that? I saw that. Here we go. Airborne. Airborne. Oh, yeah. well, he needs to get fortunate. And he did. He did he get fortunate. He did get fortunate. The only man... Oh. I did not think it was going to find the pocket, but it did. Johnny Archer puts his hand up to the top of his forehead as if to say, you've got to be kidding. Now the eight has lodged itself on the point. Ralph's looking at it. So what we're going to see is Ralph's going to play the seven off the eight, I believe, if it does not pass by easily. He's not going to want to try to work the seven into the corner pocket and then play up safe or play no, a, a the, shot on the eight. The position is tough, so he's looking at making it off the eight in the side. And he's got the angle to get there with no problem. The only problem is he's losing eight to three. Good shot. I'll say. You're liable to make the eight in the corner. If the point's not in the way. Yeah, that's the thing. He wants to make sure he gets some position. He doesn't want to play this, so... Is he just going to roll it in lightly off the eight? Yes. And that way he could maintain control yeah. of the eight. Very good. Still got that little funny angle that leads to a, a smaller corner pocket. And then when you add a little bit of power, that further reduces the margin of error on the pocket. Well, I think he's got to go two rails. Can't go one rail. He can't draw the ball. He's got to go two rails. Looks like he's drawing. Yeah. Oh, he did. He was fuller than I thought. Yeah, because he handled that smoothly. Mark, I thought you said I was playing good. You are. You are. We're a long ways from the table, Danny. I'm not, certainly not being critical. Ralph Suke will now have four games. Johnny Archer, eight. You know, there's no give up in Ralph. Oh, no. No, no. That's the thing you, you do see with some of the players that they do have a little quit in them and they, I don't mean they put their cue away but I mean they mentally shut off when things go wrong adversity is inevitable and it's an interesting thing the let's first hear time, that statistic again you said he played a certain amount of yeah. tournaments and he ran in top four how many? out of 104 professional tournaments he finished in the top four or better 92 times. Wow. <laughs> and even then, he didn't lose the guys he was supposed to. Someone would put a superhuman match on him in the finals. It was never... <laughs> <laughs> but he just doesn't lose the guys he's supposed to beat. 
he just never falters that way. He never takes a match for granted, never takes a shot for granted. And Ralph certainly knows he's capable of winning. And you really don't do well in any of these tournaments unless you ever steal a match from here anyway. Got a, kind of a fortunate break in the last rack where he had to, he tied himself up, jumped it, clattered off a couple balls, lucked one in. Let's see what he can do from here. Seven ball on the wing, left side of the box. One ball did not find the pocket. Yet another dry break. That doesn't spell good news for Ralph Suke and his effort to come back. You need to win a game or two from the break. Well, he doesn't have a real good way to go here. No. Yeah, it's not an easy shot into the side pocket, that's for sure. So, and the, the cue ball's frozen. Do you really want to bank? He, he will bank at it, I think, if he feels like he can handle the cue ball and tuck it underneath the six. Is that what he's looking at? I yeah. don't know what he's looking at. I think the cross side bank, and I think he feels like he can handle the cue ball. He's banking, handling the cue ball, banking a little bit wide. Barely missing it, but it was a tricky shot. Okay, Ralph, you can get within three now. And that was not a bad shot selection there. He could he could do some damage if he scores that. Oh, he had to shoot it. You know, he still needs three games to win the match, so you're not going to do it if you don't shoot at a ball. He's got a few obstructions here. Yeah. This is, and because of that, the, a tough shot plays even tougher. He's elevated, queuing downward. He's going to power up. Slow backswing, got a little jerky. Oh, barely to force missed it. it. Yeah. But I think he snuckered him. Well, I think he can go real first at the very least to hit this if he can't go straight at it. Yeah, but position doesn't lie going real first. He can still run into balls and not be able to hit the two. But anyway, that's, I'm thinking for Ralph. That's yeah. what Ralph is thinking right now. Well, Johnny's delighted to come to the table with this type of a shot, any shot from I think much he's going to run into be. balls. But he did. He wanted to go thin to get around the four, but then he landed heavy on the five over on the side rail, which put him where Ralph couldn't have played a better safety. It was tricky to, for Johnny. 100%. No argument. Johnny played the shot the best that he could. That's where it ended up. Well, can he hit the two at all? Rail first, off the end rail, it looks like. Uh -huh. Oh, he got him. What well, good control that was. He snookered him. Yeah, he was able to check that up with a little bit of right-hand side spin, and then when it landed in behind that, took a lot of the pace out of the cue ball. Good shot. It certainly was. Ralph's now measuring up for maybe like the one pocket safety where he kicks the two ball into the end rail and brings it back down table. Yeah, that's what he's looking at. And the cue ball can definitely get away from me here. There's a lot of things got to go right here, but it's just that he does not have many other options. Yeah, that's a dangerous juncture of the rack here for Suke. You know he's got to hit it or forget it. He shot the way you said. Well, he left the cut on the two, I believe. Yeah, and the position's across the table for the three, so that makes this play just a little bit simpler. Not an easy shot. Yeah, you don't have to go far to the four off the three. But yeah. part one is make the two. Mm-hmm. Johnny kind of feels like if he makes this and gets position on the three, this is the winning shot. Oh, he overcut it. Maybe no. that's all he had. No, no. 
he he didn't overcut it. He was playing safe. It'd be, if he was playing the shot, he... No, he was playing safe. There's no yeah, doubt about it. Yeah. And that was a good decision. He feels a little bad, like maybe he's left the edge of the two. Well, if he can make this, I'm sure he's going to have position. Tough shot, though. Good oh. shot. Oh. Look at the cue ball control. <laughs> Makes me want to clap up here in the way under the pressure. That was great. He's not done yet. I think he can kill the cue ball and stop. Which he did. Johnny's ahead 8-4, but he also knows that he doesn't want Ralph to feel a hint of momentum because Ralph is a super dangerous player. Very capable of coming back in this match. Good control there. Does he have the wrong little angle or could he hit it straight on? He's got just a hint of angle towards the six, so that you have to, this is the shot that makes you make a decision. I think you gotta go forward and hit the end rail a little with right hand English. See what he thinks. Looks like you're right. He's queuing up high right. That's what he did. Good call, Danny. That was a good shot. It's worth applause, even if you make dust. Well, John Schmidt is at the table and has won the match. Peggy Lyon defeated Tyler Steyer. Eleven four. Well, he's got to hit rails. He got a little thinner than he wanted, but I don't think he'll have a problem. He's going to probably have to hit two rails here. He can go one rail, but I think. Oh, he's playing it in the corner. Where are you going with Whitey? One rail in the same corner? Doesn't matter. He made, he made it look easy. That was not easy. Suke now Within has five three. games, yeah. And his break. A couple wins consecutively here to get a little momentum. You know, he's feeling right now like he can win this. Archer was winning eight to three, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. Now he's lost two in a row. Johnny made a good decision in that rack to overcut the ball and play safe, but he was a little misfortunate that he left a shred of the edge of that two, and Ralph, Ralph made a great shot. Great is right, especially under the heat of the moment. See, right now, he's meditating. You see it? Mm-hmm. Oh, he's very focused. He didn't come here for mentioning Germany to go through the motions. Johnny appears just a little agitated over there. Certainly doesn't want to let this slip away. Nope. 
Steadfastly remaining to the left side of the break box. Four balls, the wing ball. The one in the side. One in the side, as Danny called. Low two ball, where you at? He won't get kissed out. I think he can make the two. Yeah. Little center speed. Go one rail, shoot to three in the side. But you got to make the ball. It's eight feet away. Catches it in. Does it go in the corner no. past the eight? No, it goes in the side. He's got the right angle to go to the four. It's pretty thin. I think you're right. Ralph's now measuring up four to the five, so he feels confident they can handle the first component of this. Play the three and get position on the four. Yeah, I think he can make it without hitting any other ball. That's what he did. Now, getting to the five is going to be a little tricky. Unless you want to just take the cut. Yeah, this is a big shot right here. If he tries to come straight back, the six ball enters. Yeah, I think he'd like the cue ball right where it's at now. And take the cut. You know, he don't want to gamble. Ooh. He's not sure <laughs> yet. He spooked me. He come back so fast. Yeah, he's taking the cut. There's no bargain here. No. Nope. But you will get position if you make the ball. But he had no choice but to do this. Wow, what a hit. What a hit. Well, trouble. He made the ball, but he did not make the position. And it's not laying well for a bank, it doesn't appear. It's too extreme an angle to cut it inside. Oh, he can kill it and bank it if he wants, or he can gamble on cutting it in the side. I don't think either one of those shots is the right shot. But well, we'll what find is the out. right shot? Maybe you have to go safety here. I don't know about that. Oh, I just don't see that going in the side. Boy, that is a tough angle on. Thank you. I, I'm not saying it couldn't possibly be made there. I'm just saying it's such a low percentage. He, just, he decided to do your shot, and a good one. He is, I think, dead snookered, isn't he? It's the eight in the way. Yeah, and Johnny's called the player timeout, so we'll be back in a couple minutes. This will be a short break. All right, everybody, Johnny Archer returns. He's facing a kick or a jump. He's leading the match eight games to five, but he's in a little bind here. He was getting ready to jump. No, he's not even got his jump cue he out. He's, no, he's down there looking okay. as if he... We'll see if he changes his mind. Well, he seems pretty set on what he intends to do here. Is he going to spin it one rail and hit it with right-hand English? Yeah, I think, think you're... Oh, he's semi-jumping. No, he's not. Make up your mind, T. Liberto. Oh, he hit it good, but he's going to sell out, especially if he goes in the pocket. Well, like I said, Ralph is real good at running four balls. Yeah, Johnny was in a bad spot. Mm hmm Go 
little one rail direction here off the long rail. Keep all free of the cushion. Alan, he's got the angle one rail to get close to the eight because shooting the eight, you're going to have to draw the ball a little to get to the nine. Well, he's going to make it easy and hit the rail. You don't have to draw it straight back. You hit the rail, that'll give you a little more angle to get to the nine. Yeah, he'll get perfect. Yeah, Ralph Souquet, <laughs> scratching and clawing, chipping through rack after rack here. This will be three consecutive racks in a row. And everything's turning around. Eight games to six now. Suke behind, but with a bunch of momentum. 906 is Archer's TPA. 840 Suke. Which is decent, 840. Great tournament, folks. 112 players from 27 different countries. Yeah, we got lots of great action coming. Yeah, this is only the first day, folks. We got seven more great days. Ralph would like to be productive from the break. He really has not. Well, he did break and run out one time this match. Archer has one break and run out to his credit as well. Drop that one ball on the side. Seems to be the shot they're playing. He made it again. Watch that's out, cue ball. That's the problem. The other side. No, he's all right. <laughs> but that's the problem with and the look, cut break. He, he played position. The cut break has the oh, uh, look opportunity. At this. this is going to be a one game match. Cushion off the end rail, or is he drawing back? No, top spin, center of the table. Perfect speed this time. Very good. Wants to get straight in on the pour and the side now. He didn't get straight in on the four and the side. He can kill it. I don't think he, he's got to go to the end rail, I think. You think so? You don't think he? Well, he has to kill it if he wants to go from the six to the eight. But he, you're probably right. He's going to have to hit the rail. If we have the overhead. He wants to get straight okay. in on the six. Okay, he's going to go down to the end rail. A little right-hand English, check it up, bring it back up table. That's what he did. Not well. He's got the wrong angle now. Oh, yeah. He's going to use some juice. <laughs> he might have to play the eight in the same pocket as the six. Don't you think so? Yeah, it's hard to tell, but it's definitely not going to be as easy as he wanted. Had the cue ball traveled another 12 inches down table, it would have been so much easier. Yeah, I think he'll play the six and the eight in the same pocket. Got to put a lot of left-hand juice on this. which he did. Got a little thinner than he would like. So it's not over yet. This is a missable shot. 
Oh, he's studying it. This is all because he didn't get straight in on the six. It would have been easy. Very hard to tell if it's frozen. She playing safe? No. No, he's going for okay. offense. Oh, he missed it. He it got quick on his transition. Well, that's doom there. Oh, that's... Oh, Johnny doesn't mind. <laughs> Look at this layout for Johnny. Well, the deal is, yes, the match isn't over, but psychologically, that the letting that rack get away is very devastating. I'll tell you, I would have had to consider playing safe off that eight because the shot was tough and position was tough. Yeah. Ralph does get his fifth unforced error there. Nine games for Archer, six games for Suquet. What a difference, right? He would oh. have been one game behind. And have a... And know, his break. And have won four games in a row if he won that yeah. one. And he would completely feel like he was maybe the favorite almost. He was. He just didn't get... Straight in on the six, or even the wrong angle, you know. He got the real wrong angle. Yeah. Now, Archer can really turn up the heat by doing something good from the break, and that doesn't necessarily mean it has to be a break and run out. To just make a ball, and even if you have to play a safety, you get a good safety in there. We took a look at the rack track that did this play that Suke had three consecutive wins and then gave one away. break is effective at getting the one ball to the side, but it also lets the cue ball get loose, so it's bouncing side to side, and if you even slightly miss it, they can easily find the side pocket. And Johnny went with a little draw. Oh, a much better result. A lot of action. That no was shot on the one. Nope. This part of the game, the push-out part, I know everyone's used to it, but I just assumed they did away with it. Me too. It's a gamble on the break, so take whatever you got. I agree, I agree with you, Mark. It ties up time. It's not a very productive shot, and it also confuses new players starting in the sport. They don't understand the strategy. Or I don't think it solves anything, but I do think it gums things up for proliferation of billiards. But we do play that role. You and I have both played it for a lot of years, so we understand it and can play right, it. Right, especially gambling. <laughs> well, here we go. Here we go. We have... I think that Ralph is going to play a safety by putting the one ball down by the nine and then move the cue ball over around the other side of the five. So one ball down by the nine. No, I think you can bank it perpendicular. You know, you don't have to put it behind the nine. Just put it to the end rail. Perpendicular, one rail. Well, he tried your shot. I don't think he's going to get him. Oh, boy. Oh, I, my shot was better because you didn't have to worry about selling out a shot. <laughs> Johnny's dissatisfied. Just touched the point. Now it makes Johnny in a bad spot here to play safe. It's easy to right. scratch. Right. He doesn't have a real good shot, if any. Hmm. 
Oh, you're not kidding. If he cuts the one ball into the rail, he can easily, uh, well, can easily get away from it, or he can scratch. Well, can he bank the one at the nine and draw down to the end whale at, at the six? And that's what he was looking at. Yeah, I think that's the shot. You know what I mean? You're liable to get lucky with the nine, but get the cue ball far away. Yeah, I think this is the right thing to do. He wants action on the nine. Don't scratch in the side. Oh, he hit it good. Look at this. What a nice shot. He snuck with him. That was the shot. Now, the best part of it is that's a lot of experience. He didn't overcook the shot. He didn't hit it too hard. Got a a heavy contact on the nine ball to give himself a scoring chance, and then it worked out with the backdoor safety. Well, Ralph, you're getting punished for not getting out last rack. Yeah. Pool is a little bit tough on you sometimes. You just don't see Ralph... Uh, with five unforced errors in the match very often. That's a good hit. It was a real good hit. He didn't snooker him, but I don't know what John he has. And to make it worse, the cue ball's a little bit obstructed by the not by the six. That was the right shot, but I think he's going to leave a shot on the one. And the position lies with it. Johnny didn't like it, of course, but I don't either if I were Johnny. Tough shot, but he's got a shot. He overcut it. Well, Johnny's gonna play safe. He's got a wall of balls to snooker him with. I don't think you have to gamble on banking it. Go one rail, use the five. Try to go behind the five, you might get them with the other three balls. Well, he left a hit. I don't think Ralph is gonna be shooting this, but he's got that shot I called last time. Bank it perpendicular between the five and nine. Yeah, it's hard to whitey. tell. It's hard to tell if he can do that. If I he think can. he could. Yeah. No, I think he could hit the left side of the one. He doesn't have to hit it extremely left side. I want it perpendicular, right to where the cue ball's sitting now. Well, he's got a hit anyway. Might be attacking the cue ball right at the four. I don't know about this. Well, he got him, I believe. Nice shot. No extensions either player. This rack. Yeah, I think if you go there, Johnny, you're going to have to draw it a little. Then the five doesn't get in the way. He, he sold out. Didn't hit it. That was not the time to not hit the ball.
two cushion position for the two ball. Four ball lays along the rail. The five ball's open. Yeah, well, even if you get straight in on the four, you're okay. Oh, he missed the ball. Another unforced error. Didn't expect him to miss that one. Not that one. No, he kind of captured a nice break there. And Johnny's looking at a very thin two ball here. Yeah, and go two rails to the to the four. Overcut it. Well, this is getting very interesting. And a little messy here at the end, too, I might add. Well, I think you got to shoot the two and stick right there. You probably snooker him with the five. That's what he's looking at. Five blocks a whole bunch of the table. He cut it. Good, good shot. shot. Yeah, real good. Is he going to get a shot? No, he snookered. <laughs> you hate to make he him snookered. out. Things just compound their way here. Yeah, yeah, well, that's why I like the safe, because the shot and position were too tough. The safe was pretty easy. Now Ralph knows he needs to make something favorable happen here. Well, part one is hit the ball. He did part one. He, well, I don't know if he, did he leave him a shot? It's hard to no, tell. No, it's too thin. It's too thin. Too He's, thin? I think. I don't think he can make the ball. He can hit it. So cut it one rail and go far away with the cue ball. I don't think he has the shot. Right, overcut it one rail and come all the way back down. Is he kicking? I can't tell. No, he could cut. Oh, oh he yeah, thought he could he, make it. Slightly overcut it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Ralph is getting chances to get into this match. Position is automatic here. Make the ball. Go one rail to the same pocket with the five. Very good. You don't want to get straight in on the six. Right. Perfect. Perfect. Six, seven, eight, nine. Look pretty automatic. Very good. And he's got that little angle where you won't be on the cushion. Perfect. the eight ball home. This would be Suke's seventh win. Nine seven now is our score. Suke will be breaking. Okay, we're going to start our next round of players for the 230 round. Would you kindly be seated?
Well, the Kaiser has played far less than what his usual pace is. No, but, he's, he's not playing his best, no doubt about it. But you haven't put him away yet either. And no. you know at any moment, he's so he's ultra dangerous from here. Right. He's not going to play worse. Missed a number of open shots, at least six unforced errors. Against one break and run out. That's not a good thing. Total balls on the break. He's made seven. Successful breaks, five. Ralph Suquet has played 13 safeties. He's doing well there. One error on safeties. Table number one, from Puerto Rico, Mr. Eric Gonzalez. His opponent from the USA, Mr. Shane Van Boney. Table number one. On table number three, from Saudi Arabia, Khalid Al-Otabi. Table number three, his opponent from Russia, Maxime Dudnets. Table number three. On table number six, from Brazil, Mr. Clint Rocha. His opponent from the Philippines, Johan Chua. Okay, six balls, the wing ball, one ball on the head. On table number ten, one ball went in like a bullet. Q ball going to get kissed back in the corner. Oh, boy. Yeah. Johnny can get on the hill. On table number 11, we have a USA match between Bernard Walker and Brandon Shuck. Table number 11. And our last table from the 230. You know, you hate to say the guy leading is in a must-win situation, but it just feels like things are kind of starting to slip away if he doesn't win here. This rack. Well, folks, the thing about this is neither player has to pack his bags if they lose because it's double elimination. You got to play single loss after this. You all got away there, Danny. It sure did. Now he's got to I don't know. back up the three and try to get position on the four. And if he can slip past the six, okay. But I don't think he could. Yeah, and there's a lot of travel on the cue ball doing that. Yeah. You can bang into the nine. You he can got scratch. Funny. But I want to tell you, once again, position is real tough. Stick the ball and freeze him on the six. Play safe. Oh, you hit the eight. This is going to turn out pretty good. Oh, wow. I'm sure he's delighted with the outcome of that. He's close to and the four. The ball. Straight in. Yeah, he grazed the eight. Okay, things are looking much better now. For oh, Johnny. they're looking real good. to the seven, you want to get straight in on the seven, which he's going to do, enough to get off the rail, too. Yeah, if he just bounces away and can just stop the cue ball on the eight and the side, he'll be perfect on the nine. That will be an economy of cue ball travel. Johnny knows he's getting on the hill now. And Ralph Suquet is going to have to win four racks in a row. Claim this match. Archer needs one. Ten, or nine, yeah, 10 7 is our score. 
Gip and Perry Jones all the way from California sitting ringside. A lot of billiard notables and alumni of this event. And I heard Carol announce one of the players in the next round is from Brazil. Brazil is more three coaching country. You ever been to Brazil? No, I never been to South America or Central America for that matter, other than Mexico. This will be Johnny's last break of the match, no matter how it goes. You're very good with math. You know that when a guy's on the hill, he only has one more break. <laughs> You're good at that. All right. Johnny breaks on the hill. Okay, Archer productive on the break, made a ball. <laughs> Gonna get, does he have a shot? <laughs> he, he can hit the two. Oh, he'll be behind that uh, seven ball now. Right, don't you think so? Yeah, mm-hmm. Johnny can handle the cue ball pretty well. He only has to move it about six or seven inches. He knows he can really Make it tough on Ralph if he gets there. He did. And look, at got a good distance, too. Tough hit. Great shot. And like Manny said, tough hit. I'm saying great shot for Johnny Archer. Tough hit for Ralph. Everything is kind of weird, Ralph. I think maybe feels like he may have to warp this angle, maybe a half mass A into the fir first cushion. That's why he's looking across table. There's no relief over there either. If you have to warp it into the rail here with a little half mass A, then it's hard to get separation because you have to let the ball curve a little bit getting to the first rail. Looks like he's gonna hit it. He That's did. the problem. Wow, that was a good hit. Yeah. Under the circumstances. And Johnny's going to be forced to play safe now as well. One cushion or two cushion? One cushion safe. Oh, he didn't get him real good. But it doesn't pass the seven. He's looking to put him behind the seven. Off the two. Yeah, I guess he can go with top spin and try to follow the cue ball down and then put the two ball down on the five six that way. Yeah, he's gonna cut it and try to go behind the seven, I believe. Oh no, I don't know what he was doing. That was suicidal. That's what that was. And a lot going on with that shot in terms of the ball movement for sure. That's the end of him.
I don't see anything tricky here. the seven ball crept in there and now he's got a bridge over it draw <laughs> right. and not foul the ball. We might have uh, to take a long shot on the five. If that isn't pool. It looks pretty straight, doesn't it? Yes it does. He's gonna have to power up if he wants to move the cue ball anywhere with the elevated cue. And then he's is he going inside spin? He was. He's going to take a little longer shot than he needed. But it is the winner if he makes it. Not just a little bit longer shot. He's going to have to draw back, too. Oh, he didn't draw it enough. He's shaking his head. Uh, I think he's glad to be through the previous shot. He knows he can back up the six in. Yeah. He's such close range, so he feels good about that. Looks like he can handle the cue ball well enough, and I think he can get the seven in the side. Maybe not. Let's see. What is he doing here? Oh, he's, okay, good. Good control. This is the result, though. You're off angle a little bit. Not bad. He's fine. Yeah, he's close to the seven. This will be... Glide the cue ball across the table to the long rail, bounce it out to the eight into the side or corner. Hit the pocket a little heavy, he's kind of smiling too. I think he could roll it in half the nine. It's not that thin a cut, but he could hit and rails too. No, that's what I thought he could do. Boy. This is my favorite shot. Yeah, it's the simplest final nine ball you could hope to have. And it was just too many unforced errors by Johnny Archer, or by Ralph Souquet here to fight off Johnny Archer. This has been an AccuStats production. We want to thank you for joining us. We're going to have a short interview here momentarily with Ra Hanna and our victor, Johnny Archer. He's all smiles. All right, this is Ra Hanna with AccuStats, standing here with the legendary Johnny Archer. Johnny, you played near perfect the first half of this game. Yeah, I played well. Uh, you know, Ralph was nice to me a couple shots, but, uh, yeah, I played well. It was, uh, you know, sometimes they go good, sometimes not. Okay, so for me, following you all my life since I was a teenager, um, it seemed like your super explosive break, you, you went to the cut break. Explain that to me. Well, uh, with the nine on the spot, um, and the break box, a lot of guys are going to that, and I'm not having any good luck with it, but I'm learning a little bit. I learned a lot last couple breaks from Ralph. He's not putting near the spin on it as, as uh, I was. So uh, I went to that, and it seemed like I got a little better action the last couple games. Okay, it seemed like sometime during the game you got a little frustrated with yourself, but you, you gathered yourself and came back. Where did you learn that from? I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> I just get frustrated sometimes, and, uh, you know, I, I, I need to stay out of my own way sometimes but uh you know just over the years i guess i'm too lazy to get let it get too bad don't <laughs> all right this is accusats player of the decade johnny the archer johnny archer the scorpion raw with accusats stay tuned we'll be right back <laughs>